Hello, I'm Debbie Bell Hosking for Fin Extra TV, and I'm joined by Julia Thorne, Lexus Nexus Risk Solutions, and Rob Campbell, United for Wildlife, the Royal Foundation of the Prince and Princess of Wales. We're talking about the intersection of animal traffic and financial crime, and the two parties have just written a joint report combating wildlife trafficking with the power of collaboration. Lovely to have you both. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah, thank you for having us. I mentioned the report there. Must be such an interesting project to be involved in and ongoing, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about how it came about and also the objectives of this report? So we've been working with, with United for Wildlife for some time now. We're members of their financial task force, so we've been working with Rob and his team for, for some time. We have enforcement data which we provide to our customers, so that enforcement data includes data on wildlife trafficking and other environmental crimes. And so when we talked about wanting to do some work with, with these guys and use that data for good, um, we looked through the patterns that we had in our data and then we worked with Rob and his team and their expertise to understand what uh, financial institutions and other organisations could do with that data to understand the patterns and also what they can do to help prevent uh, and fight wildlife trafficking because it is a huge issue and it does really touch financial institutions much more than, than some of them may know. Mm. And let's pick up on that. Mm -hmm. If I come to you now, Rob. So wildlife trafficking, how does it intersect with financial, other financial crime? And also, why is this relevant to financial institutions around the globe? Well, I think you see um, financial institutions' interest here is more broadly looking at, at organised crime. So if you, when you consider wildlife trafficking, it's a $20 billion annually trade. So it's not money that can be hidden under the bed. It's, this is money that moves through commercial infrastructures. So when we look at the transport of wildlife, you're looking at commercial infrastructure. So, you know, airports, uh, shipping ports, airlines, shipping companies, logistics. And in financial terms, you know, that money is, is more than likely being laundered and cleaned in various parts around the world. So what United for Wildlife are trying to do is build these pockets or communities around the world of transport, finance, conservation experts, law enforcement, and link them up to trace and track some trafficking operations, all in the hope for, for protection of wildlife in the long run. So it was set up with Prince William's interest in wildlife. He has a passion for this. And he felt his position could be to try and influence and tackle trafficking in order to save wildlife for future generations. Mm. And Julia, you mentioned data earlier. Mm -hmm. um, Rob, I think first to you, and then I think, Julia, if you can embellish us more with the data side of things. But Rob, how does data identify trends of species, routes, and also hotspots? And we're talking here governance data or enforcement data enforcement that you data, mentioned yes, earlier, yes. as well as adverse media data. Mm -hmm. But first of you, in terms of the trends. Well, typically, in the sort of previous era, you might have seen traditional wildlife trafficking go from Africa to Asia. And then uh, as things have developed, and as law enforcement has got a better grasp of movement of wildlife and trafficking operations more broadly, then you're starting to see traffickers shift their pattern of behavior, moving through uh, transit locations, whether that's Europe, Middle East, but also we've seen uh, South America open up as a market for poaching and the export of wildlife from there. We're seeing a huge growth in pet trade. So this is songbirds from Indonesia, tigers going to the US, reptiles coming into Europe. So it's no longer this sort of Africa-Asia balance. It's a truly global market. But what we've seen with law enforcement is this sort of capability to, to learn what traffickers are doing and put items in place to try and restrict those traffickers' ability to move. Mm. And can you embellish us a bit more in yeah. terms of this enforcement data and adverse media data. Sure, so, so adverse media data is basically anything with negative news around it. So if somebody has been um, arrested for a crime, if there has been an investigation into them, and then we also have the enforcement data, so that comes from various law enforcement agencies around the world. We will consolidate all of that data, clean it up, and then provide that to our customers. And we do know that wildlife trafficking does intersect with other trafficking operations as well, so drug trafficking, human trafficking. So there, there is a link there. And so when we have our customers who are looking for um, money laundering flags, we know that they can be looking for narcotics, for human trafficking, modern slavery, and also for wildlife trafficking. So they can be looking at this as a whole, and that's what we try to do to help them with, with that data. And I, I would add, uh, to give a, a case study, so we're currently working on a case of uh, the Sinaloan cartel, so most of your, your sort of listeners will be familiar with that. 
but the Mexican narcotics cartel poaching these small dolphins, uh, vaquitas, I think they're called, but unique to Baja, California. They take the fish bladders, they dry them, and they send them out to China. Sadly, th these are now critically endangered. But what is interesting is you're seeing a, a strictly narcotics trafficking cartel branch out into other forms of organized crime. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a number of examples of this convergence, whether it's human trafficking, arms trafficking, um, obviously that narcotics trafficking I've seen, yeah, counterfeit goods, but also all sorts. What we have sort of seen at the highest level of trafficking is they don't care what's in the box. They're just shifting products for money. And mm -hmm. so that's the challenge is, is sort of targeting organized crime as a whole. But we can bring wildlife expertise into some places. And there's something that you had said previously as well, Rob, was that with the, the difference with this, this trafficking is that with you, when you have species that are critically endangered, once they're gone, they're gone. So it's not like narcotics, which is kind of, you know, it, it perpetuates. There, there, is, there is a real urgency around protecting some of these species. There's an urgency, and I know for people who are listening, it can be an emotive issue as yeah. well. And businesses aren't untouched. So if businesses want to get involved in, in the things, having heard what you have to say, and they want to get involved with United for Wildlife Task Forces, how can they do that if they want to make a difference? Well, I first suggest type into Google United for Wildlife and you'll find our website and reach out to, to some of us on there. Um, the benefit of that is it's a totally free resource. So, so we are sort of funded externally, but it means we can develop, we have developed training materials, risk products, uh, systems, intelligence bulletins that go out on case specific items or individual organizations um, that we highlight as a major risk that financial institutions should be looking up and checking against their systems. And we've had major success throughout the years of doing this. And I, so I would suggest, I would strongly encourage people to reach out and sort of join United Wildlife. There really is no sort of negative to joining. And as we bring our discussion to end, how has it been working together? It's been really good. I was saying it's, um, it's obviously, it, it, it feels good to be, to be using our data for good and to be supporting an organization like United for Wildlife. Um, it's definitely been quite shocking to understand the, the full extent of, of the wildlife trafficking um, industry, but at the same time knowing that we can help and support and, and raise the profile of United for Wildlife and the work that they're doing has been, has been really brilliant. Yeah, for, for us, from a conservation point of view, it, it's crucial that the banks come into this because money laundering, organized crime, it, the, the goal of those organizations is, is financial. They don't care about the wildlife, hence yeah. why it's depleting. They don't care about the narcotics or the product. It's always about financial. So if you can target mm. and work with financial institutions to raise the profile, understand the awareness, and put policies or practices in place to restrict traffickers, you're in a much better place to actually cause them difficulty, disrupt the operation, and hopefully you know, further protect endangered species. Thank you, both of you. And I was just thinking there while you were talking, um, how valuable it has been to hear a different kind of conversation in the studio, and one I feel is thought-provoking and may leave a lot of listeners thinking once they've, their mouse has clicked the stop button. So um, Rob and Julia, thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thank you.